Welcome back to the program. With me tonight, Liberal MP Craig Laundy, former Prime Ministerial Advisor in the Labor Party, Sean Kelly, News Corp columnist Miranda Devine, and Labor frontbencher Ed Husick. Now we're going to turn our attention to domestic politics and Joe Hockey's, Joe Hockey's uh, biography. Yeah. <laughs> Ed? <laughs> How are you looking at me, Karen? <laughs> well, uh, I just think, the, 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 I suppose the biggest question is the timing. I'll start with Miranda. <laughs> well, the timing could not have been worse, you know. Why on earth Joe Hockey agreed to do this autobiography? Mm. It just looks like ego, and especially, it's not exactly, you know, there are cons very controversial things in there, such as the fact that, you know, he says that he wanted a tougher budget and Tony Abbott didn't let him and that he and Tony Abbott were at odds on various things and, and that he didn't trust Malcolm Turnbull according to his wife. I mean, who needs that kind of, at a time especially now when the country is very cohesive and, and really come together over this tragedy, you know, now we have this petty, egomaniac politicking that Australians are totally sick of. Oh, it, it is ego, absolutely, right? I mean. Last year, I said on the record that Joe Hockey was one of the strongest performers in government. I think the problem is that Joe thought that as well. And so he agreed to this book. Huge mistake. Mm. Because the biggest test of any treasurer... But he agreed to it in opposition. Well, He'd agreed to it he in thought opposition. He, was the strongest, he thought he was pretty good he then too. He knew he was going to be a treasurer <laughs> of the government. But I think the problem is the, the test for any treasurer is the budget, right? And on every front of this budget, he has completely failed. He designed a terrible budget which hit the poor and vulnerable uh, hardest and the Australian people have recognised that he sold it terribly and he has failed to negotiate it through the Senate those are the three things that you have to jump over as treasurer and he's let his party down and now he's he's aggravating them by releasing this uh, biography so Joe Hockey's copped all the flack we haven't even got to Ed Husick yet <laughs> uh, was, yeah yeah look obviously we'll wait to come to you obviously we'll wait for a minute he can go last but look obviously uh, Sean and I will agree disagree on the budget and, and performance oh and you think it's you. been a good budget oh look I think it's a budget that we had to have Mine. And I've said that repeatedly. We are in a, at a crossroads financially, and, and Joe has put that uh, time, put that case forward time and time again. And that's what I'm doing out in the front lines as well. So, and, and the whole team are. Um, uh, you must it, have people in your it. constituency furious, though, right? Look, it, it, it is one thing it has done. It, it is definitely polarising. It has definitely driven to driven people to me. But I'm glad it has, because we we have we have got to sell it. We have got to explain it in detail. And you know that you, you mentioned the people that it impacts on. But what we haven't done well is is explain the safety net procedures that are there. The the things that are there. When you have, I had surprise, surprise. You couldn't write this. Sounds like a joke. But I had a a, a, a nun in my office this afternoon um, talking through it and and that's the level of you know you've got clergy coming to you and saying what well, you know how but when you talk them through and, and, and an issue like uh, unemployment new start from the 30s and you take them through the safety net procedures or provisions that are there he, that's that's my job but on the book Joe Hockey's wife said don't do it he didn't listen to his wife yeah. Oh, look, I, I, as a rule, Kieran, uh, try and listen to my wife whenever I can. <laughs> but in this, in this case, he said it today at the release of the biography. Melissa told him not to do the book. Tony Abbott said, no, go for it. In hindsight, would, should he have done it? Do you think? Look, I mean, um, the first year, it's the first or term. Or should he admitted that he actually... <laughs> Look, she admitted what Tony Abbott said to him. Yeah, look, I um, look. Would I yeah, look? I don't want to speak on behalf of Joe. I'm, I'm here to defend his job as a as a treasurer and uh, and as Tough a teammate. Job. And um, no, but one I'm prepared to do, and 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 one that needs to be done. And uh, but look, it would would I have done it? It's probably a, the, the politically uh, correct way for me to answer it. Um, look, probably not. But it's it you know it's, it is what it is. Joe is a he, and he is a good performer on the floor of Parliament. You've seen it, Ed. You stand opposite. Um, and uh, he's, he has been a strong performer on the floor. Yeah, no doubt about that. In terms of this book, uh, we've seen heaps of Labor books. And I, I guess if you look at some of the things out of it, Peter Credlin saying he's the next, uh, you know, his head's above the rest. Uh, that, so what? If, you, if you're going to be interviewed for a book about someone and you like them, you, you'll give them a rap, and that's what she did. I guess I'd make a, a number of observations. I mean, one is the, the issue of acumen and why you would... Uh, decide to do this book so early. Like this is the you know the first year of the government, and you've decided to do this book where you reveal that there are differences with key ministers. Um, the the comments about the budget, which I just thought, you know, given the reaction to the budget and the deep concerns in the community about the budget, and then you've got Joe Hockey saying it wasn't tough enough, uh, and this whole notion of talking about leadership. I mean, wh why would you raise this? 
in the first year of a new government um, with a Prime Minister there and there's this talk about who might be leader next and the revelations that Joe Hockey says, I'll only be leader in a government, I'm not going to go and lead in opposition. So effectively he's saying, you know, this is the only, you want me to lead, it'll only be in government. Well, how's that happen? Yeah, and we all know the answer to that. It goes through that way. Well, just hang on, you had a yeah. fairly good run. Um, so there's that. So, the, the, so you either think that he didn't think of the, the consequences of participating in this book, he could have easily declined it, or maybe he did know and he still went ahead with it anyway, at which point you've got to ask why. So I, I can't work out. And then some of the other comments. I mean, I think Joe Hockey thinks that his candour is his strong point. And in actual fact, candour is important, but where you deploy that candour and how you deploy it and what the impacts of that are, are also considerations. And he hasn't done that. And I think it comes to the point that uh, a number of people are starting to, and I think you'll hear the drumbeat more and more, question his judgment, be it on um, the way he frames his budget, through the way he makes political decisions and their right to question his judgment. But I, I guess uh, the, the point, before I go back to Craig, because you did want to make a point, he, he said he agreed to it because um, he wanted, he's proud of his story, an immigrant yes, sir, story, yes. uh, and he's, uh, he's proud of his family and where he's come from. That was the, that was the idea. And he, and he said today that it's a, a fair dinkum book. So he could easily do that in an extended feature or, or anything like that with just the focuses or on his term. back yeah. or next term or just focuses on that aspect. But the nature of books to themselves say he is... Trust Malcolm well, Turnbull, it's, it's not but a first, is it, that a politician to your doesn't point. trust something Hang on a second, but, well, yeah, shock horror in politics. But the, the point I would make is, um, on, in response to your point, if he just wanted to focus on that, he could do it. But books by the, these books, by their very nature, have to traverse a wide range of areas and he has just opened up a whole range of issues uh, relating to the internal management of issues within the coalition, personalities and differences with personalities. And you know, he will now have people questioning the way in which the government operates between personalities on issues as they arise. The thing I is, think, I think it's very foolish. With the, with, with the, well, it's Ooh. certainly a gift yeah. for, for, for Labor, but if you look at the, the timeline of these things, it would have gone to the printing presses um, several weeks ago, and I, and I guess maybe before the fairness issue was out there. Um, if, if you look at the judgment thing, that's what I'm trying to defend here look, it, Kieran, in terms it, of the timing. It, it's, it, and it's ironic that that Ed sits over there because across party lines, Ed's a mate of mine and Ed's got an amazing migrant story to tell himself, which, which at one stage, at some stage you'll do. But the thing you can't, in terms of the timing, do it in another term, do it two terms. He's the treasurer of Australia. He's got an amazing, and he's just got there, he's got an amazing Australian story to tell. And I think that was the reason. I mean, he had his father there today. You ever talk to Joe, you, you, if you've ever spoken to Joe about his father and he doesn't tear up, it, it, you've, you've met him on a day I haven't because he's unbelievably proud. He is the son of an immigrant, Palestinian, Armenian background. You know, he comes from a family of small business. Uh, he is... He has risen to one of the highest offices in the land and he's proud of his story. And so I, I don't begrudge the timing. I, you know, I, you can throw a lot in and, and Ed, you're going to it. And I expect you to. You're, you're on the other team. But in terms of his story, what you can't deny is it is an amazing Australian story. And I think, you, I, I think it will be a good seller. And, and, what, and if you look at this, let's, the, what, what Craig said there is, is, is the point I was going to put to you next yeah. is, it's, it's, he thinks it'll be a good seller. Is, is this just a beltway issue? But for the, for the electorate, for, for uh, voters, they'll just see, oh, this is a bit more about the bloke we see on the telly, oh, Joe Hockey. Yeah. And we're learning a bit more about him. Look, I don't think it's going to be a John Howard 100,000, you know, plus bestseller um, at all. Okay. And, yeah. and look, he might have a great immigrant story, fantastic. Uh, so do a lot of Australians. He should have, in that case, if that's the story he wanted to tell, confined it to that hmm. and not made all these gratuitous comments about his colleagues. It's, you know, I think the proof of the pudding is the fact that not one of his ministerial colleagues showed up at the book launch. And, you know, having having agreed to participate in this book, he then went ahead and now he owns it. You know, he turns up at the launch. He's, he's it's it's not yeah, just an authorised biography. Exactly. It's a, and he hasn't apologised. He hasn't resiled from it. I, I think it's a really bad look. But ultimately, the only person who's really damaged by it is Joe Hockey. The well, other point I was going to make, you know, you said <laughs> I, would, uh, I would attack it on um, and I'll be right to. I actually think there are a lot of people who do the, these things become gratuitous and this is not 
um, something that's just directed to one side of politics. I see these books come and go uh, from people that make these comments and, and they, they do not, you know, they are not helpful at any point in time when you're trying to deal with, with difficult issues. Mm. This will not help your side. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Um, and there are other books on the, the Labor side that come out that will also uh, do the same thing. And they are just, and they're not there to actually <coughs> advance public policy. They're, in many cases, I think they're quite gratuitous. Self serving. Well, if you go back to the, the, the book and the, the revelation that people have seized on, particularly Labor, that, that he wanted to go tougher. Again, I put to you, hmm. so what? Because treasurers always do that, don't they? they the treasurer sure. always wants to make savings. Sure. And so there are, so lots we, are we getting worked up about uh, what is effectively a lot of obvious conclusions and, here? And the answer is yes, yes and no. I mean, a lot of things in the book can be defended, but you have to look at the context that they're occurring in. They're occur we wouldn't be talking about this book if it wasn't for an incredibly unpopular budget. And it wouldn't be such a political problem if it hadn't come in the context of political pratfalls from Joe Hockey in a row, like Cigargate like the mm. dancing on the morning of the budget, like contradicting his Prime Minister several times on radio, like saying there was no plan B for the budget, and then last week suddenly saying there is a plan B, on top of the unpopular cuts I've already announced that I can't get through, I'm going to push through more unpopular cuts. This book in itself, you're absolutely right, Kieran, can be defended. The problem for Joe Hockey is it's the last in a very long series of errors, both substantive and political, that are really tarring him in the eyes of his colleagues and, I think, uh, in some quarters of the public. But sh should he really have to own all of the sale of the budget? Uh, obviously, he's no, got a big part of it, but the government, the Prime Minister was there in the Expenditure Review Committee, mm. the Cabinet signed on, uh, off and everything. If, if it's fallen flat, it's, it's and, and, a lot and, of them have to I agree with you and I can't help but think that uh, the Prime Minister and, and other members of the Cabinet are probably feeling pretty lucky right now that Joe Hockey is bearing the brunt of, of that, especially over the sales pitch. Uh, I mean, the design of the budget does fall to them all, but I think ultimately is very much the Treasurer's bailiwick. Mm. The sales pitch for the budget absolutely extends across Cabinet and especially to the Prime Minister yeah. and the Deputy Leader. To be fair though, the first budget of this government trying to clean up the mess of the previous six years was never going to be an easy one and you know the first Howard Costello budget was not popular either. Yes so it was, yes it was Miranda, this is a myth that Tony no, Abbott has been propagating. Pop the opinion polls, the, the opinion polls went up after that budget. Yeah, but John Howard's opinion polls in that first year were woeful. But not as a result of that budget. And they didn't, the they budget, didn't track as badly as what what's happening here. I mean, but part everyone's of the talking. problem is the Senate. The Senate has just put on, no, on no, everything. Let, let's not go away from the, the fact that I think, you know, Sean's right. Like when this argument was first ventilated a few weeks ago, everyone went back to the polls and said, could show by the numbers that this wasn't true. And the numbers also show that this government has uh, become far more unpopular in a shorter space of time than any others, largely because the things that they said beforehand haven't been actually carried through now. So put that, that aside. Well, they haven't but sold it just, as well. That's but, true but, as but Costello, but it's point still too. unpopular. If it was a if it was a good budget, I'm sure Joe Hockey would be owning a lot of credit for it. Hear, hear. And and he is nowhere uh, near accepting responsibility for it now and making the matter worse, exacerbating it by, as I said, bear hugging this biography, not explaining or, or saying sorry for you know some of the candor that's in it, and uh, and he's not not accountable. So for is it, it redeemable? To, because obviously there is a, a wide view, and, and from within your party as well. Um, uh, some of the more you know, senior uh, thinkers in the party believe that uh, you've got a bit of work to do, that it hasn't gone well. What, what needs to be done? What, what do you have to do to, to convince people? Do you have to start again with a mini budget? No, no, no. Look, we've, we've obviously got ongoing negotiations with the Senate um, and, and it doesn't, Miranda is right, it doesn't take away from the fact that we have inherited a structural budget mess and we need to fix it. Not, I mean, not because we want to be popular, because it's for the sake of our, our kids and our grandkids. And, and this issue of, you know, I, and I can argue that the, the specifics of it till the cows come home, we don't have time. What I need to do, Kieran, is what I've been doing, is on the front lines, yes, it is, and Sean said, it is the, the treasurer that delivers the speech on the night, but newsflash, it's my job to sell, sell it in the electorate. And yes, has it provoked a lot of contact in my electorate? Absolutely. Am I grateful for that? You betcha. Why? Because it gives me the opportunity in a one-on-one -on -one environment 
to explain what we are doing, why we are doing it, and what it means. It's easy for those opposite to sit there and, and, and you know, yell, scream, and, and scare people. And oppositions always do that, irrespective of ilk. But my job as the local member of the government is to explain what it means locally, and, and you know, I'm on the front lines doing that every day. Okay. Two well, points. Yeah. Last week, uh, this week we've had the biography and we've, we're discussing it now. Last week, Joe Hockey entered into the parliament and said, because the Senate's not passing what I've, what I've said, I'm going to find new cuts. And all his colleagues went, huh? Like, who authorised him to do that? I, I keep coming back to the point, his judgment, his judgment, his judgment. But, but I, the point, just to finish, uh, that Craig makes about the structural issues with the budget, he's not, they're not the only ones saying that. Respected economists, across the board are saying that that is something yeah, that we need to grapple out, with. They also came out, uh, you saw a number of economists come out and this week saying that the type of claims that are being made by the coalition to justify what they're doing don't stack up. But in the and, medium to longer term, you recognise that the, the spending's the, got to be reined is, in. The key is to ensure that the economy so continues to... You'll never get to, an answer on that one, Kieran. This is the problem. No, you will, but I mean, even when, the, even when the, even when the parliamentary, even when the parliamentary budget office um, you know, disproved your claims about, uh, particularly in relation to debt and what should be done in it, and the fact that you guys have never owned some of the decisions that actually doubled the size of the deficit on coming into office itself. That's future, mate. No, it's We're not. We're talking it's about actually, today. It's actually what, the what's the budget deficit you, after the first the twelve? If we get everything through the Senate, you're, and you make Craig, right? Craig, there's a very simple what answer. The deficit there's, a, there's a very simple answer: is keep the mining tax, keep a carbon price, get rid of the ridiculously unpopular paid parental leave scheme. Solved. It is true. hilarious to it's have the solved. people who are responsible that for the last six it. years of, of fiscal irresponsibility. They're the same economists. The same the same economist that Kieran was just quoting were the same economists who backed in Labor's response to the global financial crisis, mm -hmm. the stimulus vote that Tony Abbott slept through. I, that is irrelevant. The no, health structural spending no, is, what, is the what, problem. Is it irrelevant Sending because it's not a convenient no, it's, it's irrelevant because it was, it was a non-recurrent expenditure. The structural spend is the issue. Health's gone from 40, and these are actuals, mate. I keep saying this to you, Ed. Health's gone from 40 to 65 billion on your watch. They're actuals, not forecasts. Welfare's gone from 97 to 100. 145 billion on your watch. Education's gone from 18 to 30 billion on your watch. They are 45 to 60 percent increases in so six years. So why do you want to spend five billion dollars a year on paid parental it's, leave? I'm, mate, I'm really sorry, Sean, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a drop in the bucket. Oh really? Ah, it is. Five billion a year is a drop in the bucket. Journalists write that one down. Seventeen billion, billion dollars in your entry into billion, government. If we get everything through in the first budget after 12 well, months, you just had 14 billion. We'll, get, we'll have a 17 billion dollar deficit. Five billion dollars a drop in the no, That's a third I, of $17 billion. No, no. What I'm saying is, it is part of the whole puzzle. It is not just, you can't just isolate d respective measures. That's what a budget is. It's a bunch thing. of isolated measures no, no, added together. That add together. No. Exactly. Right. And if we, if we want to, well, Eddie, you're saying you don't like PPL. No, Are you saying you, know you should what? take it away from You know what, Craig, I could, I could respond, but you'll just jump in and do what you've just been saying now. I mean, the fact of the matter is, as I said earlier, economists have said that the way that the government has attempted to frame the economic debate around the budget is wrong. Two, you made a series of expenditure decisions, both in terms of the revenue and the spend side, on coming into government that cost the government money. Be it uh, in terms of handing over nine billion to the Reserve Bank, be it walking away from multinational uh, you know, rules that we wanted to put in place in terms of getting uh, nearly a billion dollars of revenue because of multinational profit shifting. You moved away from that. You moved, walked away from a better targeting of taxation on wealthy superannuants with accounts over two million dollars. You walked away from that as well. So you made a series of decisions that doubled the size of the deficit. You didn't want to do that, and then you try to say, "Oh, it's all the result so of six years." So you're saying that when Swan was going to finally and by balance the, way, the budget? Just, just coming to your point uh, about um, uh, economic performance, our economy grew when others stalled. Inflation was constrained. Jobless didn't go up. In terms of what what that Labor was did, we have got. Kevin Rudd, we Julie have Gillard got. And Swan, we have got. It was we thanks have, to China. Oh, of course. Well, there you go. So. I mean, this is the point. They'll never, ever accept the way in which the economy was managed in the toughest well, we're times. We're not going to uh, reach an agreement tonight as, as good as I, I think I might be as a, a broker. Of, but we're not going to do that, Try are we? So let's, let's take a quick break and we'll, uh, we'll be back in just a moment on the nation.